So now we're going to move on to the next part. This is, this is really important to me because I wanted to give our audience an opportunity to kind of get a glimpse inside our world here with the QEG project and Fix the World. We get these emails all the time from all over the place and some of them are so touching and heartwarming. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read an email word for word. We've taken out the name of the individual and the name of the company that they work for in order to respect their privacy. But this person was looking for a mini QEG solution to some problems. Yes. And after we read this letter, we're going to go through some videos because we've got a few ideas that Tavon would like to discuss for other types of um, devices that could help people in developing countries who are in the worst living conditions. These are simple, affordable solutions that can be implemented if we can just work together and get the parts together and make this happen. Yes. <clears throat> so this email came in, uh, came in to us recently. Uh, to whom it may concern. I am the president of a global major electronics company. We are affiliated with a program for generating solar and wind power for the subcontinental peoples in Africa, particularly in Somalia, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and some of the poorest and most helpless of all in danger. I am sad to say that the answer that the powers have come up with is to charge the people in these areas money for the use of a local solar power station to charge lead acid batteries so that they have at least some point of power at night for lighting. Most of the people do not have any dependable sources of income, so they often have no ability to get power from these charging stations. What these people need is not to have everyone around them take advantage of them in gleaning whatever monies they can scrape up so that they do not have to live in darkness. It simply is not right. I am asking for your assistance in helping me with an idea of getting some of these small quantum generators into the hands of these people so that they can have some sense of dignity. And if enough power can be generated in at least one spot so they can drill for clean water, your efforts could save countless lives of the children, especially those that take sick because of poor sanitary conditions alone. <coughs> With the irrigation water, they can more easily feed themselves and be less dependent on international relief efforts. Please advise as to whether you can assist me in this effort. I am not asking for financial assistance. I can get that from multiple places as long as it's not an outrageous amount. What I need is your technical assistance in making the unit, making it small enough for easy transport and powerful enough to be meaningful. The small unit only needs to generate from 30 to 100 watts, and that would be perfect. If there was a way to make a village unit that could generate several kilowatts, it could be used to operate the irrigation drills and pumps I spoke of. Please help. These people have nothing, and they have done nothing to deserve the way that they are being treated. I no longer want to participate in building the battery boxes used by these people because it gnaws at my conscience that those boxes make these people nothing more than slaves to whatever the local power warlord wants to charge them to use his solar array. And then he, gave, he gives his name, his contact information and all of his credentials. Uh, this is the fifth time I've read through the letter and I am starting to tear up. It's yes. incredibly powerful. It's powerful. It's very, yeah. <clears throat> um, this, this is what we're really dealing with, okay? We take all the fancy free energy sent to the moon and how fancy and spectacular it is. We need to walk before we can run, basically. Right. And we have people that are just, I mean, there were some more correspondences with this individual, and he went into more detail about how they're in an unsafe area, and they have bathrooms that are common bathrooms, and there's no light in the bathroom. So they, they can't even go use the restroom at night without being afraid of having being mugged or yes. something happening to them because it's all in darkness. That you know, just something simple to keep a light bulb lit during the evening hours so that somebody could use the restroom with some dignity. Um, this is what we're dealing with. So 
Anyway, um, after receiving these, these letters and speaking to this individual, uh, Tavon went and found uh, some different resources. Now, we were thinking about the QEG, the mini QEG, yes. which is still in development. But there's other things that are simpler and easier. So we're going to share a few videos here. And while we're looking at these videos, we're going to have Tavon speak about what these are. These are different examples of simple devices built by other people. I think they're all open source. They're all, they're all, all open source. Yes. Right? These are all open source. So th these are the types of things that engineers uh, such as Tavon and others like him around the world could just start building them and getting them to people that need them in yes. these particular kinds of areas. So which one would you like to start with? I think we'll start with uh, what is called the Solon 1 by Laser Saber. Uh, it's a solar assembly um, solution. And basically um, what it is is he created this open source design where it's a solar panel or a set of solar panels depending on your power requirements which seem to fit in this letter the, three, the 30 to 100 watt range and the, the novelty of this is that um, it's built around a, um, a PVC frame it's this PVC piping frame uh, has the right diameter to insert uh, lithium ion cells um, so that you don't need to find other space for let's say a bank of lead acid batteries um, on the back of the unit is also an inverter and, uh, and a charge controller. Uh, so it's a, it's a compact, small solution that you can use to power, definitely power um, 100 watt equivalent incandescent LED, LED bulbs. You know, let's say each bulb is 13 watts or so. You can use it to run power, power drills, uh, you know, power equipment um, for the shed. Uh, it just, it's the perfect solution for what I believe um, uh, that this person uh, so eloquently uh, uh, explained that the people in that particular developing country needed. Um, so that's the novelty of this particular unit. Well, we're going we're gonna to kind of fast forward through this video. This particular one, we'll put the link there so you can go watch the entire video. Yes. It's uh, 19 yeah. minutes in length. But uh, he's basically showing the design. Uh, apparently there were a few different versions of it. And yes. this is his latest version, right? And it's really cool because like, he's opening it up and you can see that all the batteries go right inside of the tubing there. Uh, it's a simple solar panel with the, uh, the inverter so you yeah, can plug that's, right that's into that's it. Right. And later on in the video, uh, he'll, he shows some clips. We'll try to bring those clips up where he's, he's using it to use his drill press and plug his appliances right into it. So this is something so simple you can just put it up on the roof. Simple, elegant. Um, also, I think he's not uh, in the video. It, he's going by Tesla Maker. That might be also the name of the website. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you can I, I can imagine taking these units and attaching them in parallel for more power output. Um, I just think it's it's great. It saves so much space uh, and is not complicated as a solar solution. So I highly recommend it. Yeah, we have we have like you know huge populations of people that live in developing countries that. This could power all of the light in their tent. Yes. Right. Things like that. So we're we're not talking about um, huge American homes with you know no. appliances and air conditioners. We're talking about simple, basic. Yes. You know, people can now read at night, and they can they can study, and they they can do different things because they have power. When you don't have daylight hours and you don't have um, lighting at night, you have an incredibly different lifestyle. That's right. I mean, think about what your life would be like if you have to do all the work you need to do before the sun goes down. Because after the sun goes down, you can't see anything. So you're limited. Right? So this, this is a great video. Now let's, let's move on to, uh, to another design that is an example. Which one should we go to now? Um, yes, let's go to no, yep. the, the, that, that one. Yes. Okay. So um, <laughs> this... This is, this is more of a, um, a solution that's work in progress, but it's been replicated recently. Uh, so the inventor's name is Gerard Morin, and um, he designed a, a unit that is basically a small DC motor that is ran by some power drill batteries. Um, and this DC motor uh, turns a, a magnet, and that magnet's turning inside a wash machine pump alternator because of the, the design of the alternator has these coils and you can light up 
loads that require um, different voltage, frequency, and, uh, and current requirements. So it's like he, he, he's made like a mechanical modulator. So if you're, you know, you can have this DC drill uh, motor, for example, running at 36 volts at a couple of amps, running an incandescent bulb that's rated for 230 volts, you know, uh, at, you know, maybe a fraction of an amp. Um, and that's made possible with this particular technology. So it kind of functions as a, as a type of uh, not only modulator or it transforms electricity in a unique way. Uh, almost has some gen set type of properties as well. Um, so the thing about this technology is that it looks to be highly efficient. Also there are a lot of people replicating it right now. So if you were to go on YouTube and look up Gerard Moran um, and look at his technology you'll find a whole bunch of people um, with the follow on links from his video replicating the same technology. So that's another device that's real, that's fairly small. It's a bank of batteries, maybe a grid type inverter to convert, and and the little DC motor and, and a wash machine alternator, pump alternator. Now I want to ask you a question about a device like this one. You said that there's a lot of people replicating it right now. Yes. <clears throat> but we have to. I'm just wondering. You are an engineer, and you mm -hmm. could replicate this. Yes. How many other engineers like you? are actually out there right now that could replicate this. Is this particular information taught in your basic engineering training or is this kind of like that hidden stuff that you have to dig through all of the scams and all the stuff you find mm. on the internet? I mean, is this the stuff that's difficult to learn? It's not difficult to learn. It's just, it's, it's application, this particular application, I haven't, haven't seen it done this way before. Right. So, I mean, to have more engineers with the skills to put this together. That's really what I'm going for here. Is who? How many people actually have the skill set to build something like this to make this difference in people's lives? To be honest with you, I don't think in, in this case, I don't think the engineering having an engineering background is required. Mm -hmm. I think what's more important is that you're you're a hobbyist and you're used to just getting dirty and with electronics and some a little bit of mechanical thing. I mean, these are small motors we're talking about, and um, and. Like in his case, if you're willing to just you know do a bit of soldering and and, and just play um, or hack, right? <laughs> uh, anyone who who could, who understands basic electrical safety, I, I believe can replicate this because really electronics here isn't involved. It's it's just an electrical unit. So um, I highly encourage anyone who, who who likes to dabble in this stuff to 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 uh, replicate. And there are quite a few replications on YouTube right now, so it's a good time to get interested in this. And I also want to say, if you know somebody who's dabbling and hacking, they're learning skill sets that are not taught in schools. So please support them. Yes, please do. Please support them. It's, really it's not just an expensive hobby. <laughs> I mean, well, this, Which a lot of people think, oh, it's a very expensive hobby. This will hobby, probably end up, <laughs> end up being a, um, a skill in, in, the very near in the near future. Um, yeah. Know, because people those... trying to redevelop their, re reconstruct their... Uh, their society, what have you. Well, those that, those that I think make the most change, I mean, we're looking for mm -hmm. being effective. We're not looking yes. about just talking about something and, you know, coming up with theories of how amazing this new technology could be. We're talking about people that are actually physically building. Yes. And when you perform that action and you have that skill set, you perform that action, you are the one that is making the most change. You're the most effective, which is probably why we are the most targeted <laughs> uh, when it comes to yes. people trying to get us to stop doing what we're doing because they know it's the people that actually do stuff that are the biggest threat to shifting the power structures. So, so okay, let's, let's move on to a, a third device, a third video here. Wind solution? Yes, so what we have here is a, this is just a general design for um, a micro turbine. Again, uh, micro turbines have been around for, oh, for a long time. Um, it's just, it hasn't, it's something that is not um, obvious for people to consider as, an, as a renewable energy source for the home or for a, a community within a developing country um, to use. But it, this particular clip shows a 500 watt. Um, vertical axis wind turbine that's fairly small and uh, for its size it spins at a very low wind speed and for that wind speed you can get upwards of a couple of hundred watts. Um, it's made generally to, to spin at low speeds so higher speeds obviously can produce more power. Um, it's also made to be small in a small form so if you had an array of them you can use that to obviously power 
you know, power an entire, entire village. Um, Excellent. Again, this is a simple solution. Um, this is the sort of thing in combination, let's say, with the soul in one solution would be a complete solution for, let's say, a tribe or, you know, again, a small village. Um, definitely enough to run LED lighting uh, during the night. These are simple solutions that just need, just, just to require the proper application that isn't anything too fancy or, or you know, um, out there. You know, the, these are just things that require application. So let me ask you, um, if you look at these solutions that are relatively simple, relatively inexpensive in comparison, mm -hmm. and you compare it to these big companies with tons of money and, you know, the technology is so advanced and they're using plasma rays and unicorn dust in order to <laughs> <laughs> send it into space and it's really impressive, but it's not actually in the hands of the people because that's what this is. This is the people's free energy show. We're talking yes. about getting stuff in the hands of the people. So my question to you is what do you think is stopping these things from happening? I'm always mm -hmm. saying it's relationship management, it's, it's human behavior, it's uh, businesses, it's greed, things that get in the way. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of the guy that, that wrote into us, it was warlords mm -hmm. uh, yes. were stopping it. They were, they were making it more expensive for them to have solar panels than for anything else. So they just jacked up the price on that project and That's made right. it unaccessible. Uh, do you have any thoughts? What's oh, I, well, I think that letter, um, it came from someone who was familiar with um, providing the infrastructure for these large projects that were meant that were meant meant to help with the um, developing country, you know, in this case, and it didn't, it never made it to the people who needed it, but made it to the local warlord instead, um, and and so that that utility would never devolved all the way down to the grassroots. Uh, so, corruption is a very big hurdle.